kind of taking away from some of the
Hello, everyone, and welcome to an exciting ESDL matchup. This is the week three of the ESDL. This match is going to be between the Havoc Hamsters on the red side taking on Blood, Sweat, and Beers on the blue side. I'm your host, Feoline, here, and I am joined by a special co-caster. Uh, here with me today is Corey, now finally finished with all of his finals. He's told me he's aced every single one of them, so hopefully we're going to have some great games today. Aced every single final, looking for an ace this game. It's going to be looking pretty good. We got a diamond filling in. I'm excited to see this draft. Yeah, it's going to be absolutely epic. And both teams have already started up with the ready check. So we will get directly into the draft for y'all. Uh, and uh, like my co-host saying, Corey was saying, this is uh, platinum level Eler, but, but we did get a diamond sub come in here at the last minute. So this game is going to be filled with a lot of action for you guys. It's going to be filled with a great, uh, great set of strategy as well, coming from five man teams, all going to be using the same Discord voice channel. So this will be very exciting for you guys. Already we see Poppy and Darius taken away. Focusing, uh, there's actually been a prevalence of Poppy support um, over not only the past couple of patches, but also in the past couple of games that we've looked at for ESDL. So looking to ban towards bottom side, it seems Blood, Sweat, and Beer is on the left here on blue side. Uh, looking to try and kind of clear up the bottom side of the map while... It looks like Havoc Hamsters are kind of looking to take away some tools that can accelerate the game. Talon and Darius very good at just hyper-accelerating through a game and uh, and hard carrying. And I guess if you've got a diamond opponent, you probably want to probably want to take some tools away from him right yeah might want to not have too much going on the side there you, you, you want to have a little bit more control gangplank going to be the final look at this three top laners banned out all uh, sorry four top laners banned out with the assassin talon being taken away as well so uh really interesting strategies coming out here from both teams and it seems like based on bands alone blood sweat and beers is going to be looking for more of a wombo comp um, Set and Poppy have a really great set of tools for taking frontliners and taking them straight to the back line and kind of disrupting the general front to back of a fight. And from the zillion coming out here, it just indicates even more that uh, Blood, Sweat, and Beers is kind of going to kind of going to be looking to put together a, more of a front to back comp. So let's see what R1 and R2 as a response are from Havoc Hamsters. It looks like it's going to be Morgana and. And I mean, he's got Vayne in his name. Yes. <laughs> I he would love to see name. a Vayne. Please. Are we R1, R2 bot lane? Like, you got like, banned out earlier. Like, let's go right now. Yeah. Because <laughs> uh, of cause, cards on the table. Yeah, if we see something like a Vayne come out, I love seeing Vayne pickups because they just basically are telling the other AD carry that I'm uh, better than you in every single way. But it will be the Lucian picked up. Uh, so, somewhat of a still great early game AD carry. Uh,. But you know, not as exciting as Vayne. Uh, this Elo um, is uh, what we say platinum two average. We do have peak diamonds in here. We do have a diamond four player in the lobby as well. So this is uh, what I would consider a uh, mid to high Elo game, if you think about yeah, it in the definitely. context. Yeah. Um, and with Lucian coming out, that is still a a skill check. Mm -hmm. A skill check for the bottom lane, especially with Morgana um, helping to enhance not only the, the kill pressure early on, but also providing a lot of utility and disengage for the team fight Wombo that evidently the side of Blood, Sweat, and Tears is going to be going for. And Shen looking for even more disengage tools and um, opportunities to kind of negate the Wombo combo that Blood, Sweat, and Tears is, or Blood, Sweat, and Beers, rather, <laughs> is trying to put together. So we've got the bottom lane and presumably the top lane face up from Havoc Hamsters, and we don't have the top side from our blue side. So we're going to be seeing top lane bands. Uh, you have to assume that either Galio or Zillion is going into the middle lane. So we've got one of those face up already, but I can't imagine that they... Uh, they would be sending one of these champions top lane. I don't know what the Zillion into Shen matchup is like, nor do I know what the Galio into Shen matchup is like, but I feel like you have a lot less effect from up yeah. on the top side. As the Sejuani ban comes out, looking to ban effective disengaged junglers. It looks like these teams are actually both banning around compositions. Mm -hmm. Once as we have MF taken away from, again, the Wombo of Blood, Sweat, and Beers. Interestingly enough, Jarvan still available. Mm. Uh, granted, 
it's very uncommon to see him in a solo lane, and we've already got Fiddlesticks locked in, so it would be unorthodox. But Jarvan's still available. Yeah, definitely still available. And what's even more interesting is that we uh, have three magic damage users already picked up for BSB. I'm going to shorten their name uh, to make it easier on us. So BSB has already got three magic uh, damage users. So they need to pick up a physical damage dealer in the top lane. Uh, and then they still need to pick their AD carry, which did get that pull pinched a little bit, banding out the Jin and the misfortune there. So it will be curious to see what we're going to see picked up here as well. Trundle is also another interesting pickup here. I imagine they're probably anticipating something tankier along the top side. Um, maybe an Orn coming out top side. Jax. Ooh. Uh, a interesting hyper carry that utilizes Zillion's ult and bombs and general speed boost really well. A lot mm -hmm. of utility coming out from Zillion benefits Jax quite a bit, whereas it was a bit off brand with the rest of the team with Galio and Fiddlesticks. And Zaya feels a bit off theme here yeah Zaya's mo is kind of disengaged and if you're fighting mm -hmm. against a disengaged comp then you're essentially doing no damage throughout the entire team fight and then trying to i guess 1v5 at the end of the fight 1v3 see if you can pick off uh players but uh, weak skirmish power in the early game mm -hmm. um, and a Zareth is a really good tool to shut it down it'll be interesting to see whether we see Zareth or morgana going into the bottom lane actually because it looks mm -hmm. like morgana can be flexible especially against a mid lane galio and a mid lane zillion um there's a lot of flex potential on the side of havoc hamsters whereas bsb kind of locked in the only thing we're really wondering at this point is whether galio is going bottom side or zillion's going bottom side but from yeah. the side of Havoc Hamsters, we've got Morgana, Lucian, Shen, Trundle, and Zareth. Um, all champions, Sans, Lucian, that are very good at disengaging team fights, and even Lucian, very good at staying agile in team fights, not getting locked down too early. I expect to see an early QSS come out from him so he can sustain his damage throughout the fight. Whereas on the side of BSB, we're looking for an all-in Wombo, lots of tools to set that mm -hmm. up between Galio, Fiddlesticks, Jax jumping in, Zillion ults being utilized on the right carries is going to be very important as we get into the mid game. And uh, Zaya to round out the composition. So this is going to be an interesting one. I like both of these compositions quite a bit. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, if every one of you guys that's watching in this uh, in the stream right now, getting ready for this game in the week three matchup of the ESDL, you just heard such an amazing uh, analysis of this draft uh, by Corey. So let's get some hype going up in this chat. Let's cheer some bits if you got them or whichever. But man, that was legendary right there. Uh, a couple things I want to add. T uh, patch 10.10, .10, Zaya is incredibly strong. I've been playing a lot of Zaya lately in my games, uh, and I've climbed a couple ranks already with her. She just has such an amazing ability once she hits those two items, Essence Reaver and the IE, uh, because she has that attack speed steroid on her W already. So if they can keep her alive, if the Zillion can come in with the, with the, with the clutch ultimates, the Galio can come in, with his stun and knockups and the peeling that's available, I do see that uh, the Zaya will have the ability to turn the corner in these team fights. Um, I, I just, I still am a little confused about you know why we're seeing so much magic damage come out because even Jax uh, does mixture of damage. He's more like the hybrid carry. So if I had to pick a draft, I would say that the side of Havoc Hamsters picked a more standard front-to-back team fighting composition, albeit a little more fo focused towards the uh, mid-game power spike than late game. But still, I favor them in these team fights going into this matchup here. Yeah, absolutely. This is a really easy game for Trundle on the side of Havoc Hamsters to just pick up an Abyssal Mask. You've got two light magic damage dealers between Morgana and Zareth who enjoy building uh, things like Leandries as maybe like a third item, maybe Morello Namakana, items that don't have as much um, magic penetration. Uh, maybe not scaling as well with Rabadons as some other magic damage carries can, but if Trundle picks up the Abyssal Mask, it's going to be negating some of the magic resist coming out from the side of BSB. Um, the other thing that I wanted to note about these two compositions is that they're varied. Uh, mm -hmm. They have depth to them. There are a lot of tools and flexibility for the way that these fights can play out, and it's, it's exciting to see as we uh, get higher in rank uh, in ESDL and we look at higher tier 
team compositions, we see a bit more melding. We see a bit more of a melting pot of different ways that each team composition can play out. It's not all one mode, all in, all the time. There are disengaged tools and engaged tools on both BSB and Havoc Hamsters, whereas Havoc Hamsters may be more oriented towards disengage and BSB may be more oriented towards engage. They have multiple different modes that they can play out. So it'll be exciting to see execution-wise mm. how they decide to play out this draft because Trundle has a very, very clear ult target Morgana has fantastic disengage with R if Jax decides to jump in, if Galio decides to jump in, but if Fiddlesticks can get in with the Zanyas, I'm going to be expecting a lot of defensive itemization. Both of these teams are going to want to fight against each other as we see the Morgana coming out in mid lane, as I mentioned, a bit of a flex pick. So bottom lane's going to be rough. Xerath does a great job of poking out Zaya, and though he may not have much synergy with the Lucian, um, I think Lucian's main goal in this composition is just to stay alive. Build something mm -hmm. like a Blade of the Rune King Black Cleaver and stay alive in the fight as long as possible. Let Trundle go ahead and drain the resistances from Jax when he ults and, uh, and try and play out and stay slippery. Uh, my next question is, mm. as far as early game is concerned, early game, mid game, scaling, who do you think has advantage? at these three points in the game? Who do you think's got the early game advantage, mid game advantage, and then the scaling advantage? Ooh, so I, I, I gotta say early game definitely goes to Havoc Hamsters. Lucian level two is just disgusting to deal with. And since Zaya is not paired up with an engaged type support like Nautilus or Blitzcrack, or something that has a hook for her to be able to set up her uh, feather recall combo, uh, Lucian's gonna be able to run away with this game, especially uh, Zareth coming in with the pokes and everything. So. I do favor the early game going over to the Havoc Hamsters, but late game, I there is a slight edge to the uh, to, to the blood, sweat, and beers. Uh, so that's where I would give my edges to. But right now, the game is loaded up. Both teams have bought all their items. Now they're making their way out to the river to see if they're going to go and invade or play a little safer. But again, this is the ESEL. This is week three. We only have two more matches to go before playoffs start. So this is incredibly important for both of these teams. It's going to be an exciting matchup for everyone. Let's get some hype going on in the chat. If you're rooting for a specific team, let me hear it right now. Let's go. We've got an early invade ward coming up from Trendle. This is really tech. You go in, you drop the ward onto the buff, so you make sure you know where Fiddlesticks is starting because he can be very dangerous with the full clear and with the power to go ahead and just... Um, Fiddlesticks has a very quick clear. At this elo, I expect people to know, similar to Karthus, how to clear the jungle with Fiddlesticks in by like 303. Mm -hmm, by mm -hmm. maybe pre three minutes. Uh, mm -hmm. to just go ahead and, and have your jungle item back and be ready to fight over Scuttle with a level advantage and um, with with your jungle item at the ready, with Smite at the ready. So it'll be interesting to see how Fiddlesticks navigates this early game, as I think you're, you're correct. Havoc Hamsters has quite a bit of early game uh, prowess on their team. No early wards coming out from the side of BSB, as Fiddlesticks is going to be starting red. Interestingly enough as well, Galio has grasp. Hmm. Not a common rune that you see on Galio. Generally, the consensus is around Aftershock and Comet as we get a bit of a cheese bush. Oh, the cheese is ready to go. This is going to be the Xerath coming in. But the Ignite does go down onto the Zillion here. Uh, will be able to stay alive, but has to use Exhaust. But it's going to be flash over from the Lucian. Wants to pick up the first blood. Is able to get it. What an amazing cheese here. <laughs> wow. Good old That's NA for you. Tragic. That's Lu so tragic. Zillion burns not, not just a potion but also both of his summoner spells to exhaust the Xerath flash away from that. That's that's a really rough early game, and in a Lucian Xerath lane, if you let that happen to you, mm -hmm. that's the kind of lane that can run away with the game. That's the kind of lane that has the agility, has the flexibility, and has the pressure to guarantee your jungler bot side scuttle, um, and to kind of... It's they're going to be looking to snowball. It's going to yeah. be very difficult for a Zaya Zillion bot lane to come back. From. So seeing how they navigate this from here is going to be interesting. Yeah, absolutely. And even to touch a little bit extra to that, that's the that's the price you pay for not going a hook engaged champion pairing with the Zaya. She's just not strong enough to be able to deal with this uh, extra pokiness coming out of the Zareth, who has landed every single Q that he's thrown out. Yeah, he's really doing a great job with those cues. Um, a bit of 
pressure coming in from Trundle early, and I think that's a bit of a misstep from Trundle. Uh, you're mm -hmm. guaranteed to have priority in this lane. There's no way that Fiddlesticks is going to be able to gank early. His early gank potential pre-6 is, is quite low, as we see what he's going to be able to Oh, but he's already coming in. Fiddlesticks trying to get a little bit of damage, but it's not going to be able to find a whole lot. That's going to be uh, Shin still saving his flash as well for that fight. Yeah, that's that's what a pre-6 Fiddlestick ganks looks like. Um, even if you have setup, even if you have a stun, especially against a Shen, against a Morgana, what are you going to be mm -hmm. able to do as Shen's coming back to contest this Yeah, game. he wants to go in, but then we also have a fight going on here in the mid lane as well. Morgana binding going to land onto the Galio, want to get a lot of trade damage coming through. Is going to be able to land the full death pulse. So that's going to be a lot of damage returned onto the Galio, who punished a little bit for going in. Yeah. Uh, not too much kill pressure coming out from the Morgana early, especially with Teleport. Um, and Shen trying his best to deny the scuttle crap, but not doing a great job of it. Trundle able to secure that bottom side scuttle and doing a great job counter invading. Uh, yeah. Counter jungling against the fiddlesticks and trying to deny him as much harm as possible. Taking away that big raptor is, is huge. And uh, it's going to be a matter of seeing whether or not Trundle can navigate this early game and take advantage of the power that his bot lane has been able to possess. Trundle is a fantastic early dragon taker mm -hmm. he's so healthy when he takes those dragons and especially against the fiddlesticks you have free reign going in and trying to invade bully him out of his jungle and take as many resources away from the scaling composition of bsb as mm -hmm. possible so it's yeah. going to be interesting to see how he navigates this uh, as we go forward into the dragon being up in about 15 seconds what is what is our first dragon uh, it looks like it's going to be the Cloud Dragon. So uh, I love seeing Cloud Dragon first because it means we're not going to get a Cloud Dragon Soul. Uh, yes. Cloud Dragon <laughs> Soul just very just it just feels bad. Like we're fighting for Dragon Soul. It's the Cloud Soul. It's 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 fine. Yeah. You know, you're it's not doing the soul that everyone is willing to just go ahead and give up. So you're right. It's it's good to see it early. It's not going to have many advantages, especially because ultimates aren't even up for yep. most of the champions on either side. Um, but looks like bottom lane is conducting itself as expected. Um, huge CS discrepancy actually in top side. He's going to be able to catch most of the wave. And mm -hmm. depending on how his CS is under tower, he's going to be within 8 CS. But already a pretty big discrepancy there. Um, but really not too many other uh, CS differences coming out, which is surprising. You would expect Zaya to be even further behind in this lane. Still, 14 CS is not great, but she's got this wave that's going to crash into them. So it looks like Lucian and Zareth aren't looking to freeze the wave and punish as much as they could against a zillion Zaya bottom lane, forcing them to walk up and get CS. It looks like they're content to try and um, fish for turret plates here with a short range ADC and um, make sure that they can set up for priority on the second scuttle crab and probably into dragon with Trundle already down there. Yeah, absolutely. And Zaya already getting poked out. You can see the power of that uh, Sarah coming into the bot lane. But then here's a fight going on in the top lane. A lot of abilities used back and forth, but it looks like Shen uh, will come out slightly ahead because the minion aggro is too much for the uh, Jax to be able to handle. An interesting note to make, that trade con Oh! 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 And the heal happened to be used by the Zaya, able to live. But man, Zareth is landing some excellent poke. But here we go. Trying to make it his way over here. Fiddlesticks is here to... Uh, get away from that engage i couldn't find the right word off the top of my head but you know what that's okay but because shin has a massive way of building the top side playing this lane incredibly well against the jacks that that was a that was a bit of an awkward gank from trundle he came in sure. he didn't realize that he caught fiddlesticks fiddlesticks had his pants down he was still kind of like midway through something and uh, <laughs> trundle was like you know what i i, I don't want it man I, I i didn't need to see this this is not my day i'm i'm gonna go take drag you mind yeah a seven minute drag okay we'll, we'll yeah. just handshake that please yeah don't ever let me see you like <laughs> don't don't ever let me see you catching like this again in the jungle with no. your pants down my guy <laughs> just getting them get getting things going Importantly, though, Fiddlesticks' presence down in the bottom side made sure that Trundle wasn't able to capitalize on that and get a kill, so we're still sitting at a 1-0 to zero game. Um, Lucian actually itemizing towards crit, uh, mm. which I think is interesting. Uh, there technically aren't many high health targets or many high armor targets for him to shred with Black Cleaver with mm -hmm. Blade of the Rune King, but... Um, it's a little harder to press the mid-game advantage of Lucian and to transition better into mid-game if you're going for this crit build. You're kind of waiting on two or three items mm -hmm. to come online. 
Yeah, absolutely. And since the uh, crit items did get buffed a little bit for the AD carries, uh, Lucian does have a little bit of strength with these crit item builds because uh, he used to, back in the day, he used to be able to go IE into a zeal item and then he was able to destroy. It wasn't until Black Cleaver and the combo of Bork kind of got buffed he started going that, but still... Uh, he should be able to find something, like you said, once he hits those two to three items, uh, he should be able to start doing some real damage. Yeah, absolutely. So Lucian going for a bit more of a scaling build as they are attempting to freeze the wave down the bottom side, but not doing a fantastic job. But now we see the excellent wave management from Jax that's been going on all game mm -hmm. starting to pay dividends. We're starting to yeah. see a 20 CS discrepancy that doesn't have... There, there's no in for Shen to make that up. There's no minion wave waiting for him. It really is just a flat 20 CS discrepancy as he goes in for a bit of a grasp trade, but mm -hmm. it's a super neutralizing lane, and it's a pretty free lane for the Jax as long as he's not going aggro. He's being left on an island here. Uh, it'll be interesting to see if Trundle comes topside, especially after burning the ECD. Um, I think right now, Shen is trying to flex some early game power and really just needs to get out as we see a meeting of the mind. Yeah, he wants to go in here as well. That is going to be the Counter-Strike being used as well. It's going to have a lot of damage going on, but the procs are coming through. That's going to be a lot of damage. Flashway having to be used by the Shin, but Flash Forward from the Jax will be able to pick that up. And then we also now have a fight going on here in the bottom lane. Uh, bombs onto the head of Lucian, but we'll be able to get the mobility and dash away is chugging on those potions. That's so disastrous, but actually really well coordinated from the side of BSB. Well coordinated, he needs to stay to careful though because he cannot get caught with those feathers or he will die to the Zaya. Absolutely, he's got to stay careful. So as there were three fights going on as mm. that was happening, Trundle mm. was coming into the river looking to gank for Shen. Thinking mm -hmm. that they had jungle proximity, both Jax and Shen went into a fight. At the same time, bot lane took a fight. So Shen doesn't have ult presence, isn't going to be able to use his ultimate because he locked up in a fight, isn't going to be able to get much out of the fight because his jungler is battling with uh, fiddlesticks. Mm -hmm. And the whole thing kind of collapses. And this is looking a lot better, even with just a 700 800 gold discrepancy between the two teams because of the scaling power of bsb and because of, oh oh but gala actually might be caught out here the binding is going to miss because the flash will be used to get gala to safety that's an important summoner spell down for the galio you have to be asking yourself in that situation why <laughs> why, why did i burn flash there exactly because galio is walking into a dragon that isn't up yeah. The timer isn't even on. It's not even a minute away. Why do you need vision of that side of river? You you need defensive vision inside your jungle because that's where Trundle's been running around. Is It looks like he's going to get collapsed on. He might Gally actually get caught on here. Here comes a Zarya, able to use her full combo. We'll get the Rudo, but Z Zareth is here to dissuade that engage from going on any further. This Zareth is putting on a masterclass of how to play support in this elo. And meanwhile, in the mid lane, Morgana is able to pick up a kill again negating the uh, is <gasps> what did it just the camera is not working i didn't it see it ult. but zaya wants to go in the ultimate's going through and that's gonna be uh lucian falling oh. ultimate from the fiddlesticks might be a little awkward used probably a little too late in the fight oh no oh my goodness what a, what a disaster it so looks many like it's just gonna continue so many things happened way too quickly. I was not able to keep up. <laughs> no. So he Zareth catches out Zillion. Mm -hmm. there, and Zillion doesn't ult. He had an opportunity to. He wasn't stunned the entire time. He still has his ult up. So he just chose not to ult. Didn't think that Zareth had the damage to go ahead and finish him off. But because of Lucian overextending and overaggressing, when Zareth went ahead and passed backwards to help Trundle secure the Scuttle Pryo, you get a bit of a disparity with Zaya just walking up to Lucian and killing him. Even though, wow, the CS discrepancy. Yeah, between it's kind of big. And Lucian, the CS discrepancy between Morgana and Galio. Mm -hmm, both mm -hmm. of these teams looking to really effectively neutralize the uh, global ultimates from each other's sides. But that CS discrepancy in bottom side is really going to hurt the scaling. Zaya is going to have to have a bit of a lull in the mid game unless these kills keep coming in thick and fast where she's going to have to catch up and farm in order to hit her power spikes at the right time. As yeah. It's like 
uh, Havoc Hamsters are just going to go ahead and secure the second dragon. It's still really safe. Um, BSB not really in a state right now where they feel like they can go ahead and contest this. And I think I... Oh, but they are going to go in. That's going to be stolen dragon. <laughs> Fiddlestick able to pick it up. We'll be able to get it. The Binding going to land onto the Galio trying to get him to safety. Taunt going to be used just in case. But as we were just saying, easy dragon pickup. Totally fine. Fiddlesticks comes in huge with the smite steal. Trundle felt really bad. He said, Zillion, I noticed that fight with Zareth. You didn't use your R key when you had it. I'm not going to use my D key. It's cool. It's, it's I'm fine. Good. I'm going to hold on to the smite. It's really important for Gromp later. It's, <laughs> it's just... It's, it's baffling. so important. Why are you holding on to the smite there? <laughs> That's so big, especially Infernal on a scaling team composition. That's what you want. That's Yeah, that's exactly what you want. Oh, Zaya with the clean sidesteps, though, has bought some time for Fiddlesticks to come in, who does have ultimate. Oh, gonna be able to use it. Going to go in, lots of bombs, and that's going to be a lot of damage. And oh. that will be Zaya picking up a double kill. So just as you were saying, Zaya needs these kills to come in thick and fast. They're coming to her. It's almost like she's got her mouth wide open, and here comes the choo-choo train, because the feeding is beginning. <laughs> it's really, like, <laughs> bottom side is really letting themselves go. Yeah, uh, you know they're, they're they're starting to look like the stepdad. They kind of they, they had a bit of a gut in in the beginning, and they said ah, I can take care of it. And then and then they fed two more kills, and now I think they they've just given up. I, yeah, I can't see a way for a zillion Zareth bottom lane to recover from here. Um, no, you've got a 40 CS lead, but that's not going to mean anything against a Zaya who has four kills and is going to back and buy Essence Reaver, maybe even a BF on top of that. Is mm -hmm. pressuring your tower. You have almost no tower damage in a lane where you had such high kill pressure early, and that early game advantage of, of flashing into Zillion and taking advantage of him and him not hitting his R key, it doesn't matter. Uh, yeah, and the bottom lane is kind of thrown away. Zaya is going to be able to run away with this game. So now I want to see where Zaya decides to go. Because at this point, she can really easily come mid and exert power while Galia mm -hmm. goes down bottom side and utilizes his teleport or the availability of his ult to stay uh, relevant on the map and allow Zaya just a free farm lane in middle, make things a bit more difficult. For oh, but guys. the Jax wants to go in. He's working. He's going. Oh, he's, he's actually going he's in. Really he did going. use the board. Flash forward with a counter strike up. The stun is going to land. Auto attack resets coming up. That's going to be the W from the Shin. Trying to keep himself a little live a little longer, but that will be enough damage. And Jax over here able to take out Meow Meow Meow. Super clean recognition from the Jax there to realize that Shen used his Q so he couldn't pull the dagger back to him to W again to mm -hmm. negate any of the damage coming out from the Jax auto. So he just gets to free hit with Blade of the Rune King on a Shen that hasn't had the opportunity to build enough armor to negate all that auto attack damage with no tower there as well. Mm. Jax is poised to run over this game. Trundles towards the bottom side. They have vision on all the members of Havoc Hamsters. And Jax is just going to continue to free farm here. So advantages coming out from both the bottom and top side on BSB. And this is the point where they're going to be looking to contest the next dragon. Yeah, This absolutely. next dragon is going to be much more exciting so long as Zillion remembers to press on. So long as he remembers to press R and Trundle remembers to press the D key, that exactly. will be it. And you know what's even crazier? Like, the two members that you didn't want to get fed are fed now. Zaya has a 400 gold bounty. Uh, Jax has a 250 gold bounty. And with the way the bounty sy systems work in this game, uh, even though that the uh, Lucian has a farm but oh my goodness, that's a lot of damage onto no. the Z Zillion, who does remember to press R, but probably too maturely. And now here comes the Lucian, able to go in. Is the 2v2 going to go through? Ultimate going to be used. Heal going to be have to pop to get the it Lucian to safety. Matter. And still, the huge feather recall damage onto the Xerath will be enough. Flashing the mastery. Oh my goodness. She says, let's go, baby. Do you think she's salty about the early game lead that Lucian had? You, you, you got to imagine. At this point, if you're Zaya, you're telling your Zillion, leave. I don't want you in lane. I don't need you in lane. She can evidently <laughs> 1v2 this lane. Like, I don't know, she but she did all of the damage onto the Zareth, onto mm -hmm. the Lucian. Zillion's not really providing any pressure. Oh, and now she's actually baiting for the Galadin to be able to come in. Black Shield onto the Morgana. Trying, but the power actually will be cleaned up, binding in a land onto the Galio, so they will be able to get away from that safely. Oh, my goodness. As Rift Herald gets dropped in mid, Jack's able to catch out Trundle inside this jungle, get him low enough that Fiddlesticks felt safe walking up mid and just dropping that not going to be able to get a second charge onto the second turret but opening up the mat map with that turret and all the outer turrets actually about to fall 
this is going to be a very, very easy dragon for the side of BSB to secure. And with a uh, water drake on the cards. Oh, but the yeah, the Toronto might have actually gotten caught out here. The bombs oh. are going to land, and that's going to be the Death Scythe coming out from the Fiddlesticks to do so much damage on the Trundle, but he will be able to stay healthy. Does have a lot of healing with his kit, but that will be the Dragon started up here by the side of BSB. Feather Recall going to go in. Morgana actually might have got caught out a little bit. The fear was so good coming out of the Fiddlesticks. And that means the Binding is going to land onto the Zion. Yeah. How much damage is going to come through? Here comes Shin, but the ultimate does come in clutch from Zillion the Zillion. Able to get it in. He's able to do it, but here comes the Galio doing such amazing work for his team. Staying alive and doing the great things, and Jax has come in. Here comes a Janitor for the cleanup kill. Lucian, you're not going to be able to do anything there, but actually still wants to go in. Ultimate having to be popped, but no. Jax is fine, baby. He's fine. That was huge. Importantly, Trundle, there was never a universe where Havoc Hamsters gets that dragon because Trundle didn't even have Smite Up. He used it on the blue buff mm -hmm. to get away with enough HP to try and contest the dragon, but with that, and with complete dragon pit control, there was no way that Havoc Hamsters ever gets in there. So a great decision by Fiddlesticks to go ahead and try and catch somebody out as they're rotating in to maybe pick up a couple kills off of the back of that dragon. And everything really just comes up, comes up BSB. Um, yeah. So now, if you are Havoc Hamsters, mm. you don't have the scaling on your side. You have a lot of disengaged tools, though. Mm -hmm. Right now, what you're looking for is a mistake. Yes. The easy, easiest way that Havoc Hamsters can get back into this game is for Trundle to look for counter ganks and to see what kind of opportunities he can make for himself um, that involve disengaging an overzealous team that mm -hmm. just took a dragon. Just like that right there. That's going to be a lot of damage onto the Zillion, and he will actually die. So, Caster Curse coming in clutch for Havoc Hamsters, able to get that pickup onto the Zillion. More of those is what Havoc Hamsters needs to come back into this game. They need to take advantage of the fact that BSB is feeling really good about themselves. They came back from that early deficit and they got the dragon. Now they're looking to go ahead and press their advantage and they don't always have the coordination required, especially when you have pick tools like Xerath, like Trundle, like Shen, like Morgana. You have to be looking for a, an unfair 3v1 to try and shut down this uh, 800 gold bounty on the Zaya, the 650 gold bounty on the Jax, who are both side laning right now. So you're looking towards these outer quadrants to try and get picks, get money onto really important carries like Lucian, like Trundle, and look to get yourselves back in the game by contesting and just taking what you can get. Mm -hmm. Because they still have another two dragons to go before they get soul. You can feel okay giving up the next dragon if it means that you get shutdowns. Yep. The more important objective coming up next is going to be how can we kill Zaya? How yes. can we kill Jax and how can we get our carries? Lucian wants to try and start going onto the Zillion who might be caught out again as well. Oh no. So I think that's the right idea. But just as you were saying, they needed to go, they need the shutdowns from the Zaya and the Jax to come through. Because there is only 3,000 gold that separates these two teams. Havoc Hamster still has a window, albeit starting to close uh, ever so slightly, but still a window nonetheless to be able to come back in this game. Yeah. Uh and Lucian pivoting here to go Essence Reaver into Black Cleaver rather than into IE. So he's looking for a bit more of that mid-game prowess. He's realizing that if he doesn't get it going soon, mm -hmm. um, he's not going to be able to get it going almost at all. Um, yeah. So this Jax's pressure on the side lanes here against the Shen is paramount because it means that Shen is always going to feel pressured when he ults. That global ultimate isn't always going to be available. Conversely, on the other side, Morgana being able to out-CS Galio by a mile is pressuring him and making him feel like he's not going to be able to use his global ultimate as Shen goes in for a really good catch there. Not going to be able to find much, though, as uh, Jax isn't going to be willing to take a fight under the tower. The rest of the team rotating down here. This is kind of what we need to see. Mm -hmm. We need to see like a flash engage onto this Jax to just kind of take him down. See if you can alleviate some of that side pressure, then rotate towards the top side. See if you can get a pick on Zaya. Not easy, 
when she's got heal, flash, and ult, but mm -hmm. dual as... Oh no! Zillion's gonna get deleted, but ultimate will be available. That's gonna be the Fiddlesticks actually ulting over. Galio coming in clutch, so that's actually a bait. Good job, Zillion. Didn't think you had it in you. Uh, it's, it's, it's like, well, oh, Shen oh no, here, here comes Shin trying to from. teleport in. Jack's unable to get the kill, but we'll be able to pick it up eventually, but that is going to be the Shin coming in as well, but that will be Lucian falling low. Flash forward used by multiple members here. Counter-Strike not going to be able to land, but that will be just a one-for-one one trade. No, sorry, one-for-two because Morgana fell as well. So, great collapse here coming out from the side of BSB. Zaya wasn't even involved in that fight. No. Zaya didn't have to be there. He was, fine. was totally fine on the other side of the map, and it's it's one of those situations where it, it's a bit of an odd one, um, but a comparison that I think uh, merits uh, mentioning nonetheless. If you've ever played a low elo game, you know you're you're playing no, an never iron those. Four, you're trying to degrade uh, your rank a little bit, so you're not trying terribly hard. But no matter how much you feed, whether you're zero eight, zero ten. 020. Hmm. The problem is when Tell you me. have presence on the map, mm -hmm. if the other team doesn't realize how little you're worth, they're going to burn cooldowns on you. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. Zillion walking up out of position there. You you have to you have to feel bad because Havoc Hamsters knows that the Zillion has been out of position. He's been out of position twice. They killed him the first time, they almost caught him the second time, forced him to burn flash. But this third time, mm -hmm. this third time it looks like BSB woke up and realized that Havoc Hamsters is burning all of their CDs on this character mm. that means nothing and has a GA built in. <laughs> We're just going to go ahead and take that fight. As yeah. soon as you burn all your cooldowns on the most useless member of our team, we'll just go ahead and we'll go in. And Fiddlesticks taking great advantage of that opportunity, great positioning as we come into a bit of a lull state here. To, um, to take advantage of that fight. Really. Oh yeah, but Jax willing to go in onto this Morgana, but the binding will land, so Morgana able to get away there. Really bloodthirsty. Yeah, they're, they're just looking for it at this point. Yeah, I mean, but he's got Trinity Force, so Trinity Force on Jax is totally fine. He's gonna find two control wards here. Uh, but yeah, more to your point with the Zillion, I mean, just being able for his team to recognize that he's playing a little too aggressively, but still then to be there to help counteract that was so clutch and so heads up from the side of BSB. Absolutely. Um, interestingly enough, the Trundle build coming out here is also more damage oriented with the Tiamat uh, mm. rather than picking up an Abyssal Mask like you might expect or even a Spirit Visage with the amount of damage coming out it means that Trundle's not going to be that um, efficient a frontliner as oh but the fiddle six wants to go in here on the top lane and shin oh. has no chance whatsoever good collapse from the fiddle six to go in on this uh shin Fantastic. but zaya actually might be coming out here having to use the feathers oh. that's going to be so much damage shut down on the zareth able to pick up that uh bounty kill there and then we have some more action going on as well jax is here T tp has been used Lucian, are you going to be able to get away? That's going to be the Galio ult coming in onto the Morgana. So that will mean disengage coming out from the side here of the Havoc Hamsters who get away with that pick. That's great. What a great pickup to have. Maybe not onto the Xerath, ideally. But yeah. still not a bad magic damage carry to have that 800 gold go to. They're mm -hmm. getting a bit of prio. With the teleports burned and with the global ultimates burned, Shen still has his ult up. Shen still has his TP up. This is a heads up call. Mm. If Havoc Hamsters actually start Baron here, this is fantastic. And they're baiting Zillion oh. to overextend. Like they he might actually does. get it. He's going to go so out. Well oh my goodness, the damage. He just kept deleted from the map. It wasn't so even. Well wasn't even a chance. No. Just walked straight into the into the death brush and, 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 and died. Did what the death brush does. So looks like Havoc Hamsters is going to be willing to trade mm -hmm. an inhibitor for the Baron. Yeah, they As will go Jax in. That's a lot of damage onto the Xerath, but the Galio's wanting to go in here. Ooh. The Baron actually might have done enough damage to the side of uh, BSB. Ultimate going to come out from the Lucian, trying to get away from the Galio, but going to be unable to because the taunt is enough. And look at that. It just didn't do enough damage. It, it was no. a fantastic call. Oh, but look at Jax! Works. 
Look at Jax, Jax though. Is just gonna Jax is like, game. you know what, guys? I don't need Baron to win the game. I'll still do it anyways. There are four members down for the side of Havoc Hamsters. I don't know if Xerath is going to be enough because he's still unable to back. But look at this. Jax says, I don't need anybody else to win this game. I'm putting the team on my back. And that will be Blood, Sweat, and Beers. The work has paid off, and they're going to go up 1 0 in this series. Jax is typing in Discord chat. Top diff. Top diff. No. Because that was some fantastic <laughs> stuff coming out from him. It was just really clean overall execution from Blood, Sweat, and Beers. They played to their win condition, and getting the Zaya that accelerated, letting the Jax kind of take over top lane against Shen, who should have the early game advantage against him, just spelled doom. The damage graph shows it. Jax doing fantastic damage in the side lane. Fiddlesticks actually putting in work with a lot of his ultimates, and Zaya really being a bit more of a damage soaker uh, than a damage dealer. But mm -hmm. she didn't have to do much after putting the bot lane so far behind. As soon as Blood, Sweat, and Beer started pulling ahead, there's no second gear for Havoc Hamsters to turn to. It was all in in the early game, or it's all out in 27 minutes. And we saw the result of that. So hopefully we see an adjustment from Havoc Hamsters. Yes. A bit of an adjustment towards more of a scaling composition or at least having a tool in your varied composition that says, hey, it's okay if we get behind early, we have this to turn to in the late game. So looking for a bit more flexibility and variety with length of game in the team composition coming up from Havoc Hamsters this next round. Yeah, absolutely. And it looks like we will see a side switch as well. So the Havoc Hamsters going to be going over to the blue side while the Blood, Sweat, and Beers, who now are up 1-0 uh, in the series, are going to be taking on uh, the red side is here. So there looks like there will be some adjustments made uh, from uh, from both teams here. Now, uh, what's, what, what I liked a lot was the Zaya, okay? She had she had probably the worst start you could that she didn't that that wasn't her fault right her zillion got caught out uh lucian had to use flash in order to get the pick up the first blood so she's already down then at one point in the game she was down at least 60 cs in the entire game but able to remain calm able to realize what her what her job is put out damage and then survive as long as you can with the zillion behind her who did figure out how to press R and her ultimate available? She had the she she had the damage put out, and you can see the feather recall, the buff that Riot did on her was able to do so much. There was at least a couple times that she deleted Zil uh, Zareth off the map just from the amount of feathers she had out and pressing that E button. I mean, it was absolutely glorious. Yeah, she played the lane really well. She was able to seed CS early in order to play for an advantage later on in the game and go ahead and go for that 1v2 after Zareth goes ahead and forgets to press his R button. And a uh, really potent jungle presence from the Fiddlesticks that game mm -hmm. made sure that Zai was able to get ahead. I think Fiddlesticks overall had really potent ganks sans the first one at level three, which wasn't that fantastic. But Trundle really failed to either capitalize on counter jungling fiddlesticks when he realized that he was getting behind on lane pressure and ganking mm -hmm. and failed to go ahead and, and invade, challenge fiddlesticks and get vision control and make sure to um, deny fiddlesticks the opportunity to go ahead and farm without being caught out. So... Uh, yeah, overall fantastic play from the Fiddlesticks that game. Uh, really comprehensive play from the entire side of Blood, Sweat, and Beers recognizing, hey, it's okay. Zillion's inting a little bit, but that's fine. fine. It's fine. Because we bring it back. He's got an R key. That's all we need. Um, yeah. Jack's really able to take over that game, especially from the side lanes. Uh, taking a total of, I think, including the Nexus Towers, I want to say seven. Outer Tier 1. Outer top tier one, mid tier one, bottom tier two, tier three, tier four, tier or uh, nexus two. So maybe closer to like six, but six or five. But that's it's quite a few towers, quite a bit of lane presence from that Jax. It'll be interesting to see how the bands change here mm -hmm. because maybe that Jax is actually a Darius main. Bruh. Maybe things go even worse Bruh. So, yeah. <laughs> don't 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 Bruh. get my hopes up like that because it's been a, it's been a minute since we've seen dunk 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 gg coming out of a darius and 
we also saw the difference, right? You mentioned it earlier, the Jacks uh, typing in, t- uh, you know, top diff, uh, <laughs> you know, assuming if that was coming out. But the diamond difference between uh, looks like it is a, a high gold in the top lane coming out here. You can see the difference, the differences. And it's not really to do with, like, better mechanical play. It's not due to, like... Uh, just sheer, um, just sheer outplay. It has to deal with the the preparation and the mindset. How well did Jax play? He had like what 15 or so minions pushing into him in the top lane um, that Shin was able to get, and then he just knew exactly when he was able to go in with that damage. So it's like, uh, I, I what I'm looking for here from the from the side of uh, Havoc Hamsters is to fall back more on their fundamentals. They got to understand what it takes in order to win a game, and they have to play a little safer and a little smarter, and I think that they will be able uh, to tie the series up. Now, real quick here, uh, Corey, we're getting some love here from the chat. We got hashtag we love Phaelon and Corey already going, so good job, man. Keep up the good work, man. I appreciate it. Poggers. Poggers, right? <laughs> And the Darius ban immediately. Okay, the so the Darius. This, this yeah. Jax must be a Darius man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it must be a Darius man, but it's okay. He's got Jax. I wonder if we're going to see a Jax ban out here, too. Usually, uh, when some when, when a champion runs over a team uh, in these games, we do see a reactionary ban. That is the NA style, and that is how we roll. That is how we do it around here. But um, it seems like they're sticking with their guns. Uh, they yeah. want to go Darius... GP, and if it's a salty run back, we're gonna see we're gonna see a talent ban coming out here. As I think that uh, um, BSB have to be happy with their bans. Mm -hmm. They have to Mm -hmm. be happy with knowing that they banned efficiently and made sure that they could go ahead and get their team comp rolling. Um, Even though it was a bit of an unorthodox roll, still was uh, important for them to ban out certain champions to make sure that their front to back didn't get neutralized and they had the opportunity to scale later as as the zillion ban coming out this time they the said, zillion they ban said, coming this out time, <laughs> this time we don't care about talent the zillion was the fine <laughs> we don't need to worry about anything like that it's so interesting to see so that means the jacks is open here uh but i think that the top laner is not scared at all being able to pick up the orn who has an incredible presence here in the top lane so uh that might change some things up a little bit yeah orn is a really potent champion and i was gonna say if your top laner is outmatched mm. if the the jacks showed an understanding of the matchup that was so in depth mm. that Shen never really had a chance or an end to that game. You Jax right. understood that he had to pressure him when the global was going to be the most potent. Jax understood when to go ahead and trade with him, what the power differential was, and how much of uh, uh, the line he could cross to go ahead and pressure that Shen. So you put him on a safe pick like an Orn, and you get answered with a Camille. Mm. This. Ooh. This is this is mono red against an orn. This is wow. That's is, hyper aggro. Uh, so is this the hey a turn one goblin swings in for two with haste because he's a two one, and then turn two you got four damage coming out, but then all of a sudden turn three comes around you only have three mana on the field and you just pop a steroid so then you're swinging for like twelve damage. That's basically like the control player's like I don't even have mana for a cancel spell and you're like Haha, that's what I thought. He's, he's all out, yeah. And and you run around and you go ahead and affect other areas of the map with Camille's mobility. Mm-hmm. <sighs> Nunu's an interesting pickup here. I really don't think that uh, Nunu is very potent mm. um, as, as a jungle pick, especially against a Warwick. Maybe he's got better objective control, but overall his map presence and game pressure is a little bit lower. Lacking a bit of damage as well. Yeah. On the side of Havoc Hamsters. So. But you see a little bit of a of a theme here. The top side of the map wants to have uh, CC and peeling. So the Nunu does have his snowball that uh, and he does have uh, his slow on his uh, no, tiny slow balls or whatever you call it and, atta- and an attack speed buff. So with this, it looks like the side of Havoc Hamsters is dumping their eggs in the AD carry basket without even seeing what that AD carry band uh, that, that, that pickup is. We see a lot of uh, 
you know, protection. And then even still with the Orn, with the ornaments coming in, that's going to mean uh, more virtual gold gold differences coming in as well. Yeah, absolutely. It's going to be... It's going to be an interesting draft because picking up this much tankiness and utility early, the Ezreal ban is fantastic. You're bit... Oh, oh what, what, oh. what? Um, someone, someone DC'd. Uh... Look, rip, <laughs> look, looks like a... Some... <laughs> the side of Havoc Hamsters looked at that draft and said, you know what, I'm gonna take the minus three this time guys yeah <laughs> just, gonna, just gonna go ahead and minus three this one My, minus three it's totally fine well while we wait for the uh because the picks and bands are gonna have to be exactly the same according to the yeah. esdl rules while we wait for that to get loaded up uh Phaelon is going to take a quick uh quick potty break um so i'll be right back I think it's i think it's potty water time yeah potty water time okay potty, potty water time i'm gonna turn up the music a little bit for everyone to hear uh while this thing goes through and then we'll be right back All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are uh, back. We are simply waiting for uh, the two teams to get everything started up here. The main issue going on right now is they're trying to get the picks and everything exactly in the same order as it was before for the competitive integrity. So while we wait on that, it'll just be just a little bit longer. Uh, so use this time to get some potty breaks in. Use this time uh, to refill on your water because we are in it for an exciting game two that's absolutely going to be coming out because uh, with that game one, it was on a nice edge. We had... Uh, both we had the early game uh dominance of the havoc hamsters but then the turner what the, the the corner was turned from a uh, blood sweat and beers able to put in that extra hard work that is in their name in their mancha so we have to see if havoc hamsters going to be able to rally themselves understand that it was incredibly close they just had to play a little uh better and a little smarter and they should have a good standing to be able to take this game out and tie up the series one one yeah, absolutely. Um, we got trolled a little bit. Uh, somebody decided that uh, instead of Morgana R3, they would just go ahead and pick Vigar R3. Which was... <laughs> they tried to sneak yep. one in there. No, 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 no. No, no, no. So we had the Zillion ban. We're going to see an MF ban. Then uh, after the Ezreal, a Syndra to keep it maybe not in order, but the same. And now... Okay, so uh, everything's in the we same are, order. We, 
we might as well, yeah, be back in live because we didn't actually see this band come out before uh, somebody disconnected. So, yeah, let's see what this final band is going to be. What I was mentioning earlier, though, talking about this team composition is because you're drafting an Orn, a mm -hmm. Nunu, and a Zyra, Ooh. you kind of have to draft um, something like an Aphelios here. Mm -hmm. Something that can 200 years the enemy team 1v9 to an extent and sure, try sure. and pull away in the late game because without it, you're not going to have enough damage between mm -hmm. Orn, Nunu, and uh, Zyra, at least in the mid game. Uh, yeah. So taking away the Ezreal there, super smart. Taking away Syndra from bottom side, super smart. Banning away your own Zaya, pro probably not the best idea because Zai is another one of those champions that nope. they can provide quite a bit of damage later. They um, switch sides. Yeah. Zai was on uh was on Havoc Hamsters and Havoc Hamsters was on red side last game. Now they're on blue side, so they they're banning out the Zaya that destroyed them uh in game 1 cuz Kaisa 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 uh, fits the bill. Okay. Fits the bill. It it can um, it can work. But, yeah, the curious thing is, where is Shivana going? In, oh, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah, where, where? I guess this is a mid Orn against Organa, uh, Morgana, which actually actually makes sense. So we've got a top Shivana, uh, okay, a jungle Nunu, um, and Orn. I don't think the Shivana matchup into Camille is better than the Orn matchup into Camille. Um, Shivana has a tough time laning against any of these solo laners here. Um, mm -hmm. And because you knocked locked in Nunu so early, it's not a flex pick. You mm -hmm. kind of just have to put it in a solo lane now, and there's no way that Nunu can go into a solo lane. Um, so top lane Shivana is very different from the nightmare that is uh, Dark Harvest AP Shivana in the jungle. Yes. Shivana in the top lane generally runs Conqueror. Mm -hmm. and builds more tanky or might see an early thorn mail ninja tabby very similar to the shen last game and mm -hmm. then we'll finally see a transition into something like death's dance to prevent her from being bursted out but camille is very good level two is going to be dealing true damage with her q mm -hmm. so it's gonna be a tough ask from shivana to go ahead and and try and even stay even in this top lane right on top of that we have Kaisa, who's a fantastic scaling pick. But what Orn items does Kaisa build? Uh, sometimes she goes IE, depending on which path she's going. Is she going for AP Burst, Assassin, or is she going for more Sustained? I think uh, that they should be going for an AP Burst, just because there's not a whole lot of tanks on the side of blood sweat and beers so uh if that's the case then death cap is an item but she just usually didn't build that too uh she doesn't build that too early so i, I i'm gonna be i'm gonna be very curious to see what the ornament is gonna come out here or does kaisla just uh get a late christmas and by the time she builds that death cap third or fourth item then here comes the ornament rolling in and then all of a sudden she's unstoppable Right. Yeah. Who knows? I, 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 because one of the meta Kaisa builds is to go ahead and pick up uh, Zanya's around third item, fourth item if you're not building Nash's Tooth. But most mm. of the time, you're going to be building um, Muramana and mm -hmm. Windshoes first. Um, and then at that point, Zanya's is probably better to go ahead and pick up um, just because it gives you survivability against the dive of Warwick and Camille. And uh, Orn's going to be able to upgrade that, but it's not a very efficient Orn upgrade. And you kind of look at the rest of this team for what you're going to be upgrading here. You've got another Zanya's on Zyra. Mm -hmm. You've got maybe a locket of the Iron Solari on Nunu. Mm -hmm. um, or even because of the immense amount of magic damage and mixed damage that's coming out, he could also build an Abyssal Mask. That second. would be good. Yeah. That'd be really good. But on Shivana, um, she doesn't have a tendency to pick up Black Cleaver at any point. There's not going to be really any option for Shivana to go ahead and get an Orn item. So having Orn on, Orn on your team is innately valuable. The mm -hmm. problem is there's not a lot of damage coming out from this um, 
from this team composition from from BSB. What what if we see but well, what about this? What if we see old school Shivana build going into the attack speed build trying to get the Q maxes? And Blade more of the Rune King actually. More of a team yeah, fight. Blade of the Rune King and yeah, that that could be something. Yeah. We sure. could go back old school boys. And you know what? Speaking of old school, <clears throat> a lot of people uh have pointed out that I look incredibly good in this uh team liquid ad here, but uh I'm an AD carry main. And a double lift has been traded back to TSM. So, uh, in the mail has come my brand new TSM hat. So, we're switching up mid-series here <laughs> and putting out the real games going on. So, let's get it. TSM with no brim. TSM with no brim. Ooh. It's real. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Let's, it's the real TSM with no brim. Let's go, boys. So we're so we're back in this thing. Things are coming out well. Uh, LCS starts uh, June 13th, by the way. We'll probably do a watch party for that. Uh, I'll probably get all everyone that I've casted with if they're down for it. Uh, we just have a little bit of a watch party uh, streamed on Twitch. That way, everybody can kind of you know hop in and enjoy what's going on because that will be incredibly exciting to do. But now, oh, this hat just feels so much. It, it feels more like home now. You know. And we got so many TSM uh, icons here for both teams, but now the real business has started. It That's looks right. like it's going to be time for game number two. Again, this is the ESDL. We're in week three, so there's not a whole lot of games left. This is going to be the matchup. The blue team, Havoc Hamsters, versus the team that has already gone up 1-0 in this series with a dominating performance, Blood, Sweat, and Beer, starting on the red side. This is going to be exciting. Um, you have to give the early game edge this time to BSB. And in fact, because of Camille eventually becoming a threat, but having a lot of early game prowess, um, I think actually the scaling on both teams, even though uh, Havoc Hamsters secured themselves the or Orn advantage, is actually pretty even. As I mentioned earlier with the itemization, it's not necessarily the most uh, potent on the entirety of Havoc Hamsters, whereas on the BSB side, Camille is going to be much, uh, be kind of a Jax surrogate this game. Mm. Um, essentially do the same things as Jax, scale into the late game uh, farm, side lane, and have a lot of kill pressure on um, whoever shows up to stop him. Uh, I don't think even Conqueror Shivana is going to be able to do much against a late game split push Camille, not much can. Uh, it's very akin to a Fiora and just how suffocating it can be. At least Jax is killable, but uh, if this Camille gets right. ahead, it's going to be pretty disastrous. So I think that Nunu has to be a bit proactive um, making sure that this volatile top lane goes well for his team early, uh, whereas Warwick is just going to be looking probably for counter jungling, looking to hit six, not going to have much kill pressure uh, or invade pressure against the Nunu uh, very early on. Mid lane is kind of uh, a bust. Horn's yeah. always going to be able to just W straight through uh, Vigar E, and Vigar is always going to be able to E on that side. So I, I imagine mid lane is probably going to be left to their own devices here while we see a bit more proactivity in the other lanes. Um, just Kaisa Zyra, a lot of magic damage coming up from that lane, but a devastating combo of Morgana Caitlyn. The bot lane player. The, this, uh, yeah, this, the, this the, is a scary lane. Let, 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 me, let me shed some lights here. So let's switch roles for a moment. Let me just... Uh, Tell everybody, if they don't already know, Caitlyn Morgana is disgusting. Level 2 comes out, so that means the trap's going to be available. When the Morgana Binding lands at level 2, that is a lot of health dead. Already we see it actually happening. Look at Zyra's already half health in this lane, and it's still only level 1. That is the power of Caitlyn Morgana, able to pressure you from range. And when those traps and the crits coming out with compiled onto the headshots, it's not going to be a lot that Kais is going to be able to do. So they have their work cut out for them in this bot lane. Exactly. Um, especially with such high kill pressure on a Kaisa early. Mm -hmm. um, there's a, a lot that Zyra can do to catch out uh, more melee oriented supports, more tank supports. But against another caster, and especially a, a caster negator like Morgana with the Black Shield always available whenever she needs it. Um, it's going to be a bit difficult to get the ball rolling uh, as we see Warwick actually looking for an early gank mid. Yeah, actually might be able to find it, but the Ornn is going the correct way, able to use his dash. So the Warwick just comes in and takes a bunch of minion aggro uh, for, for nothing. So good job, Ornn. 
Yeah. Uh, Nunu is just going to continue farming. Uh, he's actually going to be looking for a bit of a game. Oh, he's coming in as well with the biggest snowball ever. That might actually be enough. Flash going to have to be used by the Caitlyn, but that is the Morgana being caught out here, having to use Flash as well to get away. Kaisa able to do a lot of damage. It's going to be first blood over to the Zyra. But the Caitlyn is still alive, and Nunu ended up falling as well. So even though that was a 3v2, still the bot lane of uh, BSB able to play that really well. Absolutely. Uh, again, uh, <laughs> the ADC for BSB is definitely thinking uh, support difference in his in his head. <laughs> um, as again, his support dies early. This time, not as devastating though, because the Caitlyn gets an immediate trade kill, and there weren't. I mean, all summoner spells were burned actually. Bob for sure. Except for what? What, what? What is Wark? Wark? Wark is trying to do some things. Not really sure. What you up to, my man? Where, what? where are you going? What? what? Why are you trying to gank this lane? What are you? <laughs> get up! Get up! Get out of here! Just, just farm, bro. Just, just, just farm. Like, it's fine. Camille's good. It's fine. Yeah. Look for a counter gank. Go invade his jungle. Your Camille has priority. You can go ahead and rotate down whenever you need him to. You, d you don't need to be this fancy. I think he's kind of riding the high from, uh, from his fiddlesticks last game, and 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 really excited. He thinks that he can go ahead and gank everything, but doing a good job here. Uh, taking away Nunu's blue side while well, Nunu does the same to him. Mm. It's a vertical jungle. Enough, if uh, if uh, Havoc Hamster is inquired into their blue side, uh, they'd be able to collapse on him really easily. They have a really easy uh, blue side collapse, but it doesn't look like they're mm. interested in it with the Morgana Caitlyn. It's like they're just going to let Nunu walk away as, again... Oh, but the Ornn actually might be got here. The Viger Cage is going to be great, but the Nunu is making his way over. Is going to be able to get a little bit of a return gank. That's going to be flashed, used by the Vigar to get safe. So, advantage going over to the Havoc Hamsters. Yeah. Um, and that's big because it guarantees that Warwick is going to be low, which means he can't actually contest Dragon. Mm -hmm. Nunu, full HP, almost full mana. I probably would have passed towards bottom side and just taken that early Dragon if it were me, um, looking to, to press the advantage because Vigar has no mana. Your Orn has teleport, so he can be present for that. And even though your bottom lane doesn't have lane prio, um, the fact that you have two smites with uh, your your uh, Diki and with your Q on Nunu means that objectives are really easy to secure. So we mm -hmm. see Nunu attempting to do what I was talking about in the pregame and uh, make something happen topside, but a nice, nice river ward is going to deny him any luck. Nice to... Nice uh, river reward. That's that's a pog champ river reward. That's a three hundred gold river. I was uh, I was playing golf today, and uh, it is surprising to me how into. Oh, but we actually have that story. Might have to wait. We have a little bit of a fight going on in the bot lane, but no, it's just going to be some trading. So Kai's oh, going to be low. Just a Morgana fight. Yeah, but continuing. So a lot of Koreans are incredibly into golf. Uh, the females. Uh, in the LPGA for uh, from Korea are dominating that. So it's funny because I'm practicing and we hear just a bunch of Naisu, Naisu on the shots. But actually, Naisu. Zyra gonna start falling low. This might be Naisu for the Kai <gasps> for the Caitlyn, but is gonna be able to sidestep the Piltover Peacemaker there. Well played, but then uh, Camille wants to go in. Also gonna be used from both top landers. That's Ignite burning, and that actually is gonna be advantage to Survana. But the health potion will keep Camille alive. But still, this is actually working out pretty well. Nunu is here in the Enclave gank doing some things. Bo bo uh, Binding going to land from the Morgana. Kaisa is going to go onto the Morgana. But then that's a lot of fight coming out onto the Caitlyn. That will be healing. And then huge pickup. Kaisa will be able to take down the Morgana. Chasing her down into the river. Nice. Great positioning from Nunu to go ahead and set up that gank on the low Morgana. Looked a little bit scuffed at the beginning, but Kaisa able to pick up the kill and Nunu not falling to Caitlyn is pretty essential. Uh, Zyra yeah. also didn't fall there. They kind of overextended with that, and Orn looking for a little bit of kill pressure. He might actually have found it. That's a double knockup, but they just ran right into Vigar while might not even have to worry about it. That's a lot of damage still coming through. Orn combo does do a lot, and then 10 dude 64 able to take the kill onto the Vigar. It's Pog Champ anyway. Uh, Orn, I, I'm pretty sure the Orn interaction there is you can actually W through Vigar's uh, stun wall. Can um, you? So if he had W there rather than Eing, uh, he wouldn't have gotten stunned, but it didn't matter anyway. Interesting, yeah. 
Warwick actually going to have to use ultimate to get away. Ignite will burn on him, but still will be enough to get him away. Morgana trying to go in here to get a little bit of extra damage. Will be able to land the poke onto the Nunu, but still not going to do a whole lot. But actually might be caught out here by the Zyra. Kaisa landing her W as well. Might want to go in. They do have the health advantage and the mana available to be able to have everything going on. Ultimate still available for the Kaisa for the shield, but they will just walk away uh, dancing around this Drake, which is clearly the next objective. Again, it's Cloud Drake, so we're excited because it won't be Cloud Soul. Pug Champ. Pug Champ. I love it. Um, it's it's really interesting too that that Camille trade in the top side. Um, mm -hmm. Shivana was seeding a lot of CS early, evidently, as uh, she's got a 20 CS deficit at this point against the Camille. Mm -hmm. uh, but that also meant that the Camille wasn't able to go full mono red, go aggro. Um, Shivana was pushed under her turret for a lot of the time, and that's actually really good for the Shivana in this matchup mm -hmm. because it means that she has no pressure to make anything proactive happen, and she mm. doesn't give a Camille any ins. So right there, you saw as soon as they hit six, um, Camille had no potions, whereas Shivana was able to sustain off of the refillables, mm -hmm. and the trade actually went really evenly, almost in favor of Shivana, forcing Camille to burn Flash as we get a repeat gank on Vigar. Repeat just... with the fancy feet work, but still going to be caught out here by the biggest snowball ever, and that's going to be a lot of damage onto the Vigar. The Orin should be able to pick that up with the auto attacks. No, Nuna going to be able to pick it up, so uh, Vigar starting to get caught out a little bit too much now. Yeah, big time. Uh, Vigar just overextending, and it seems like the 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 lane control coming out from BSB is a lot less prescient this mm -hmm. game. Uh, they're, they're not seeing their line into this game. They're not seeing that if they can freeze the waves and put themselves in an advantageous position in lanes, they've got really strong advantages in the lanes as Warwick goes for an ult against Shivana, but Yeah, but going to get Ilta back into the tower, but the Rift Herald is dropped, so that will be uh, a lot of plates going over to the side of both of them, Camille and the Warwick. But should be able to clean that up. And unfortunately, it looks like a little bit of connection issues. Riot servers are having uh, uh, those unfortunate overloads. So Kaisa has been DC from the game. We will have a little bit of a pause. But as soon as that comes, uh, as soon as the game starts back up, we will get back into it for you. But man, is this game doing some incredible things right now already? So importantly. Hmm. Kaisa is even with a Caitlyn Morgana lane. In fact, <laughs> Kaisa is even up because she has a kill. Her support now has Leandris, which is huge on Zyra. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, Nunu has been very proactive, whereas Warwick has been able to secure, secure himself zero kill participation, uh, even though he was uh, overextending early and just trying to get something started. So wasting a lot of time, uh, surprisingly enough, fall, not falling behind in CS, but Nunu definitely getting a lot more out of his ganks than his opponent in the jungle. Mm -hmm. Vigar falling behind uh, because of the overextensions, not being willing to just freeze it under his tower um, and let the minions crash into him, allow himself to scale, trying to push things against Orn, who is fantastic, especially with Grasp, at destroying super squishy champions, which, compared to Orn, everyone is in the early game. So with a mono red draft here, Mm -hmm. coming out from the red side of BSB, uh, it seems like the shoe is on the other foot now. The yeah. scaling draft composition is getting advantages early, whereas the uh, the aggressive early game draft is, is falling behind and mm -hmm. not able to secure its win conditions. So it'll be interesting to see if uh, Havoc Hamsters can maintain their composure mm -hmm. and continue... Uh, looking at pause screens because uh, it looks like sepia, sepia filter is all we're gonna get this game. As uh, I'm, I, you know, honestly, oh no, <laughs> you, you would think this would be a uh, color commentator's wet dream, having so much time to analyze things. But honestly, <laughs> I, 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 I want to see more champions die. I want to see Orn clap some things. I'm a little tired of looking at sepia screen right now. So take it away, Fowling. I, I just can't. Ah, okay, so let's talk about the filter going on right now. How good would it be to actually play the game in this kind of scenario? Imagine if they brought back, like, a classic server for League of Legends, and it came back uh, with this little bit of a, like, uh, overlay shade that you can play with it. Imagine, you know, the... Um, 
<laughs> like the the streamers coming back, like XPK, you know, playing Cassidy in the top lane, uh, Hotshot GG and Reggie, you know, Annie and Nidalee shenanigans going on. That would be some Pog Champ type things, especially you, you if you had this <laughs> the C, the, the the sepia uh, filter going on here. I mean, you set up the sepia filter, mm -hmm. and then you it's over. On you don't need anything film else. Grain. Everyone puts on a top hat and an mm -hmm. old timey mustache starts twirling. And there's no audio in the game. It's all just subtitles. <laughs> like we're actually in a movie from the 1800s. Bruh. That <laughs> would be, <laughs> that would be pop. First iteration of CLG versus first iteration of TSM. I'd be down to see that. Uh, Riot should make that happen. Let's go. <laughs> old Dignitas, where's my throwback game? Put Cutie back on stage. Cutie back into I the games? <laughs> Put Cutie back into the games. Michael Santana, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> the legend. Michael the most Santana. gorgeous of mans. Oh, but the binding is going to be landing here onto the Zyra. The game has started up. Hopefully we have no more issues coming out from the Kai'Sa. Uh, we pray that it was all Riot and nothing to do with the ISP that Kai'Sa is on right now. Uh, whichever, whichever option gets a stable connection, that's going to be the most important thing to me. Absolutely. So looking into this game, at least the difference here hmm. is that on BSB, mm -hmm. you have Vygar, who is going to get to his point uh, if the game goes... Oh, out. but so much damage coming out of the bot lane is going to be Kaisa ulting in, but the exhaust is going to land. So how much damage is going to come through? Heal would be doing its damage as well, but that would be kill picked up. Kaisa and Zyra playing that well that the Morgana went into the aggressive the vehicle, and now that's going to be the Kai'Sa oh. actually taking it, but the heal going to come through as well. A lot of damage is going to be Ignite going down as well, but how Ooh, much man. the Zyra's lay, uh, staying alive so much, but not going to be able to find the damage because, oh, she's caught Ooh. out. But Orn's here. He's made his way. That's a lot of damage. Goodbye, Caitlyn. You are gone from this game. Warwick, I don't know what you're going to be able to do, but he's going to try and get away. The Orn is here. Smite used to be able to slow the Orn down so that the escape can happen, but man, what an amazing heads up row here from the mid lane Orn. Such a huge TP from the Orn to go ahead and turn that fight in the advantage because I'm pretty sure if Orn doesn't TP there and take out Caitlyn, it actually turns into, into a one for two. Yeah. Morgana dies and then Caitlyn's able to put down enough damage with Warwick to go ahead and kill the Kai'Sa, but that was such a such a great roam by Orn. He's got his Abyssal Mask finished at 12 minutes, so he's already going to be working towards uh, hopefully a Sunfire Cape, uh, the second most efficient item that Orn can go ahead and upgrade on himself and looked, looking to make plays. Mm -hmm. Looking right now for a uh, dragon that isn't quite up as uh, that Camille E froze my whole game. <laughs> <laughs> the Camille froze your whole game like the, the stun was so good it came out. It was, it, it was pretty poggers, so poggers. <laughs> Oh, but the Zyra actually might have been caught out here. That's going to be trapped landing, but actually barely missing. Caitlyn misplacing that. Going to have to use Flash to pick up the kill. So unfortunate, because if that trap that's right here would have connected and she had placed it a little better, that would have been Flash saved from Caitlyn. But still, yeah. Zyra picked up either way. A uh, lot of damage going on onto the Shivana in the top lane. She's going to have to be careful. Ultimate is available, so might be able to turn it around. But Camille, oh, she's so nasty. You have to wonder why Shivana is is feeling like she has to stay here. She has mm. teleport. Um, she's been down on items for a while. So just to go ahead and TP when you have low HP, Warwick is. Oh, now be Warwick's for coming in. What's gonna happen? Ultimate is gonna come out oh, from the Shivana, so that will be Ignite position. popping down. But still, Warwick. Uh, yeah, this, that's two v one, too low of health, and exactly. Uh, that's the reason why you don't stay when you're low. Yeah, Shivana was convinced that she could go ahead and, and win the 1v1, which I don't even think she does against Camille no. under tower if she goes ahead and positions closer to lane, expecting the Warwick, I imagine, from the weak side try brush, but not really having any luck with that, getting ganked and eliminated. So it's just gonna go oh, that's a lot of damage onto the Morgana. Might have been caught out having to use Zonus. Is there going to be any damage left? That will be Kaisa getting the snipe with the W. So great nice. catch there by the bottom lane of Havoc Hamsters. Money, money onto the right carries, and with uh, Kaisa coming back here, I was going to mention before when Caitlyn blew flash, this lane has huge kill pressure mm. against the Caitlyn and against the Morgana because of the item disparity that exists on the side of Havoc Hamsters. So mm -hmm. bottom lane conducting themselves way better this time, playing super, oh, yes. super good, and I think um, playing a, a scaling pick here was was definitely the way to go.
Absolutely. Uh, because at this point, your 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 marbles, if you are BSB, are all in the Camille bucket. Mm -hmm. You're putting all your marbles in the Camille bucket, and you're hoping that Camille's going to be able to provide enough pressure for you to scale um, at least to your mid-game power spikes, your one or two item power spikes, so you can go ahead and contest the objectives that New York is going to be able to take for free. Is, uh, yeah, that's going to be the Morgana binding actually landing. It. You can see the power of the Caitlyn combo. Cyrus gone. She's not in the map. And then a fight here on the top side. More, uh, that's going to be the Shivana trying to get going on this Caitlyn. But then the Warwick is just setting up a tent perfectly. That was enough damage, but unfortunately not able to get it picked up. That's going to be the Orin Horn used. Exhaust onto the Kai'Sa. Lots of damage coming through. Now it's going to be the chase onto the Caitlyn. Is she going to be able to fall? I don't think so. She'll get away safely. But man, Warwick understands exactly what he needs to do. You just spoke about it earlier. The, Kate, the Camille is the eggs in the basket for the side of uh, the BSB. So they're doing exactly what they need to. They should just dive this. Mm. Orm should have stayed, and they really should have just dived this Caitlyn if she was going to go ahead and get greedy and stay. Yeah. Uh, Zyra, I don't know. not in too much danger here. Not really going to get chased down by a Warwick, especially if Camille isn't willing. She's just going to go ahead and focus the tower and get that pressure down topside. So this opens up the map for Camille. We should expect a bit of a lane swap here. Vigar should probably go towards the top side. Um, we should see bottom lane rotating towards mid. We should see Camille going bottom side to kind of try and secure that outer tower gold and see if she can continue pressing the advantage in the same way that she was able to with Jax. Uh, she's got her Triforce finished. She's got Ravenous Hydra. It's really all she needs, especially when Javon hasn't even been able to finish the first item death stance. No Thorn Mail or anything. So the question becomes who exactly can side lane against this Camille? The immediate answer is probably Orn. But you mm -hmm. really don't want your Orn too far away from fights um, when objectives are up down in the bottom side. But I guess they've both got teleport, so probably a, a lane assignment swap from them. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how they adapt to that. It's, uh, if a stray Morgana binding comes out and Zyra and Morgana just kind of throw things at each other and nothing really happens. Yeah. Kind of throw things at each other. Oh, <laughs> binding barely missing onto the Kaisa there. Uh, and it's good to see uh, decent heads up plays here because the Morgana missed the binding but then was able to get the Black Shield onto herself so that way the Zyra did not connect with her own snare uh, from those running vines, whatever they're called. Yeah, no no overall value trade for either side there, really. Mm -hmm. um, as Nunu showing his presence bottom side and Warwick's getting ready to set up for the counter gank. So now that he's been able to put the Camille ahead, mm -hmm. you're not going to see much attention put towards the top side. For the Camille, which means that Shivana is going to be on an island. Mm -hmm. This is a big mistake from Havoc Hamsters, not changing the lane assignment for the Camille, not communicating about who exactly can take on this Camille, and and ending the laning phase. Yeah, uh, we've already got uh, double tier towers gone, um, and this is an issue that's uh, not as prevalent in professional games, but it's definitely prevalent in solo oh. queue type matches. The dodge was so clean there, but the Morgana is going to fall. That's going to be ultimate use from the Kaisa, but how caught out is she? Would have liked to say that ultimate for later, but looks like the Warwick might be able to pick her up with the help of the Caitlyn. Flash going to be used, so fancy feed work there. Teleport coming in from the Orn. They might have overstepped a little too yes, much. Kaisa turn. might have bought enough time that's going to be teleporting onto a trap. What? That usually happens, but that's going to be ultimate. The Shivana actually came out, but still Nunu is here to help the Kaisa. Shivana unfortunately will fall, and that's going to be so sad. You hate to see it. You hate you hate to see it. Orn Ooh. had it up. He did. Orn had Why it up, not? but he didn't want to commit it. Why not oh. him? Why not? Oh, that's so bad. Yeah. That's so bad. Camille didn't even have to burn teleport there. So Jeez, that puts uh that puts a big damper on things. Because right. it puts Camille in a good position. It gives Caitlyn back, who's, who's been actually sustaining quite well. She's been getting herself a nice kill advantage in this lane, even though she's got a CS discrepancy. Yeah. Coming in. That's going to be the Orn Horn actually missing onto two people. Ultimate use from the Nunu. Going to try and do a lot of damage, but is going to be knocked out of it. That's going to be some Black Shield going onto the Morgana. Kill picked up already. Nunu trying to get away with his life. Orn is very tanky, but is she going to be able to wait? No, Camille goes in onto the Nunu. Ultimate landing. It's a lot of healing coming out, but not going to be able to pick up the kill. Yes, it does finally come through. That's going to be the chase coming through onto the Warwick. And then a better collapse coming out here from the side of BSB. Right now, BSB is just... Right now... BSB is playing to their win. Mm -hmm. They're grouping up 
they realize that right now they are strong with Caitlyn uh, having as many kills as she does. Mm -hmm. Camille being as far ahead in lane as she is, and Warwick having such a valuable mid-game pick ult. Um, Havoc hamsters just seem to be willing to take these 3v4s, 3v5s without much vision on the map. And this is where a game can start to slip away from you. You see uh, BSB securing about a 2,000 gold advantage. And um, if even if Havoc Hamsters has to give up this next dragon, mm -hmm. let your wings scale. Don't be looking for this hyper-aggressive play because... Oh my goodness, there's so much damage onto the Zyra. Caitlyn able to land the crits, will be able to pick it up, and the Vigar Cage is going to lock down too. That's going to be more damage onto the Kai'Sa, who will use her ultimate, but is going to be shut down by the Warwick. And, oh no, I think you're right. They should have just conceded the dragon there. Now Camille wants to go in, able to catch up the Nunu. Shield is going to be on her. She's going to be able to take a lot of damage. That's so much. Return onto the Nunu. She is incredibly fed, and Orin trying to catch out and do a little bit of damage. Is able to pick up the Morgana, but will fall to the rest of the team from BSB. And that will be a dragon pickup for their side here. You got it. Shivana. No. 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 Don't do it. No. 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 Don't give a she no. Also, oh, she might get. No. Oh, no. She didn't even get the return. Oh, oh no. no. You're not AP, dude. <laughs> no. You're no. not AP. You maybe kill Caitlyn there if you're AP, but you're just not. You're and just not. And it's, you know what? It's her fault, too. She didn't go AP. Should have gone AP. Should have gone, gone AP. Yeah, yeah, um, for sure. But this is pretty disastrous. Mm -hmm. Orn isn't feeling the effects of the, the slip and slide that's mm -hmm. occurring in other lanes. Kaisa isn't feeling the effects of the slip and slide, but the accessories of the BSB team composition, not necessarily their carries, mm -hmm. but everyone around them is getting stronger. And they're yes. trying to take these really, really dirty skirmishes against a Vigar who has fantastic stun. Like the, the pick potential on BSB mm -hmm. is, is ever present. And they're right. throwing away leads by trying to force things that really don't need to happen. If mm -hmm. you lull state with your advantage, put the right laners in the right positions, sure, Camille's going to continue getting ahead, but you also don't put so much more gold into the pocket of, uh, of, of a Caitlyn. Yeah. You don't put so much more gold into the pockets of a Warwick who's going to be able to buy items. And, um, and, and kind of negate your new advantage. This is nice. Oh, that's a Pog Champ kill right there. <gasps> Kaisa able to out kite the Morgana right there. So good. How good was that play right there? Camille actually trying to go in onto the Orn, though. It does have so much damage. Even the Orn is able to get anything to do with the Camille, but the Shivana actually going to get caught out again here. Ultimate landing onto him as well. That will be more deaths. But look at this. Camille actually might be caught out, and this is where all the gold is. She is going to be able to yes. ult over that, and then this will be it. able to get away. Oh. No. Oh, but here comes Kaisa. Kaisa's here. Is she going to be able to have the damage? Is going to be able to use Ooh, her E4? Red, we'll red have that. Yes, that is going to be enough damage. And shutdown yes. so critically goes over to Kaisa right there. And now, listen, that was all the gold. The gold difference that you see, what are we, 2,000 gold difference? All of that is on Camille. If they can shut her down, uh, the Havoc Hamsters still have a way into this game. They dedicated so much that the uh, the red side here is going to try and look for a Baron. Oh, no, what a great pick. Orn able to land the Orn Horn, and that's going to be a double kill picked up for Kaisa. As uh, BSB trying oh. to sneak away the Baron is going to be able to do that, and so now... Looks like that will be a free Baron. Oh, Caitlyn actually might have got caught in that here. Here is the Zyra. Ignite does come down and shut down over to her as well. That means Caitlyn will fall. 700 gold picked up for the Zyra, who does have the potential to do a lot of damage in the late game. This is really, really important for Havoc Hamsters to have picked up. Mm -hmm. At this point <gasps> in the game... Oh, and they picked up Ward? ...might have the opportunity to end and... With with he's going in. position, he flashed away, but he's rooted and it's just gonna die. <laughs> just gonna die. I don't know just what else. Die. It, just he die. did die. He didn't need to die, but but he's like, I'll die. It's fine. Yeah, and it's, uh, I'm cool with it. You know, it you, got, you guys seem like a nice bunch of guys. I'll just, uh, you yeah. know what? You got the Baron. Why don't you take me too? I see yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's he, he, you can have me for sure. And now for the first time in this game since about five minutes. Now, uh, Havoc Hamsters have uh, resumed, reassumed their gold lead here. Yep. 
Um, so Shivana here, uh, I expect a back to come out. And if Havoc Hamsters coordinates this, if they walk down mid as five, if they mm. put Shivana into the side lane against the Camille, the Camille isn't going to be able to 1v1 you in a wave full of Baron minions. So the Shivana is mm -hmm. actually relatively safe laying against the Camille in this situation. Mm -hmm. Then you can take all five of your players and you can pressure a better 4v4 with teleport from Shivana coming in mm -hmm. around this, this dragon. So I want to see a group here because this is this could be a game ending Baron genuinely. Yes, if they play this properly. Yeah, um, and looks like towards the dragon pit. Oh, who's going to be caught out here? This is going to be flash forward from the Zyra. We'll be able to get her ultimate off. There's going to be a lot of damage coming out. Ornhorn coming in as well, getting the knock up onto the Vigar. We'll be able to lead him off the map, and that's going to be Kaisa going in onto the Camille. Kaisa used her ult to sidestep. Would have liked to hold on to that just a little bit longer. Probably could have taken out the Camille, but still. Great pickups here from the side of Havoc Hamsters. Absolutely. And this is this is what they needed. They mm. they needed some sort of pick or to create pressure around an objective. I anticipated the mid play, but this play is just as good because they're just handing it to you. Vigar and Morgana are just walking it in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they're really throwing away the 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 potential for BSB to claw this one back as yeah. Warwick again caught out of position. We know he doesn't have flash. All all Shivana had to do was ult there, but yeah. uh, looks like they're not really going to look for it. They would much rather one. crash the wave in a tower, which is the smart move here, I'd say. Yeah, yeah it's, it's not a bad decision to make. Now you've got a 4v4 with Zyra missing uh, versus yeah. Vagar. Zyra, obviously a much more important part of this composition than Vagar is for the other team with how far behind he is as well. It'll be interesting to see if this siege actually nets them anything because they do have really potent side lanes. It just seems like nobody wants to use it. They're just going to mm -hmm. handshake it, and this feels really good for the ESP. Yeah, it looks like the pressure is going to come through. Ultimate going to be used by the Warwick here, trying to go in. Vigar Cage going, but that's going to be a three-man knockup from the Zyra. We'll be able to land a lot of the CC. Now it's going to be Camille slowly falling, and then Kaisa with the damage. We'll be able to clean up the rest that of the might. team come. No, Ultimate's into the Vigar Cage. What are you doing? You it's, it's not a blink. It's a dash. <laughs> it's a dash. It's not a blink. It's not this a blink. This might be game. This might be game. Yeah. Uh, coming out from... from uh, from Havoc Hamsters. That's such a, I, I don't think they realized, I think they actually thought that they were posturing for a fight and they win the 5v5. Yeah. Um, and I don't think they realized just how mistaken they were about that. However, mm. all things said and done, that inhibitor is still standing. It is. This is not gonna be a game in the Baron. It's not just yet. It's gonna have to be an Infernal Soul or when Baron comes up again, we'll have to see that. But BSB is, Firmly out of the driver's seat. They're sitting in shotgun. They're looking over at Havoc Hamsters. They're saying, you must be Jesus uh, because <laughs> you've taken the wheel. You've yeah. taken the wheel away from me, and honestly, the game is in your hands. So if you yeah. want to throw it, you know, <laughs> just to give a, a poor little old me a little opportunity. I appreciate it. A yeah. little disadvantaged. <laughs> uh, but if you want to give us the game, we, we will take it. Thank you. For those please. less fortunate, we appreciate the charity please, coming please right in. Please let us to, uh, we need this for playoffs, is is really all they can do. They, they just kind of have to, um, to beg for it at this point. As long right. as Havoc Hamsters continues playing this way and play a proper front to back like they did in that 5v5, what, what can I don't know, but it looks like the Camille will try and actually catch out the Shivana here. It's going to be a lot of return damage. Orn Horn used. That's going to be a Warwick caught out. Oh, so unfortunate. They're just not having any coordination whatsoever. And Havoc Hamster is really able to capitalize on that. Yeah. Uh, interestingly enough, that Warwick kill doesn't mean a whole lot in, mm -hmm. the, um, in the greater span of the game. Uh, sure, you give them another couple hundred golds, but at the end of the day, there are no objectives up for a little bit. He's going to be up in time for Baron, and actually, this puts Havoc Hamsters out of position to contest the mid tower take. But it looks like Caitlyn doesn't want it. They're looking to split up again. All the all the squishy elements of their team are on one side of the map. Yeah, but it doesn't look like the SB is is going to be looking to punish just because of how far behind 
Vigar has fallen. You don't even see the spooky ghosts coming out from him second because he's been farming so poorly mm -hmm. and um, and playing so inadequately that he, he just has to pick those mines as the defensive item here. Um, so he's not going to be able to have that uh, really great cooldown reduction that you can get from Vigar having Zanya's um, spooky ghosts and uh, water squirter. Um, so this 5v5 is looking at very very precarious, especially with Baron up. This is smart play coming out of half the game. Yeah, smart play indeed. That's going to be the Morgana binding landing onto the Nunu there, but the siege will continue. There is a lot of wave clear here from the side of uh, BSB, and without the Baron empowerment coming out there, uh, that siege is going to be dissuaded, but the Morgana is going to be able to land the binding onto the Shivana. So the that, posturing that, that is complete. Death's Dance is really going to protect her. Even the Vigar W came down and it didn't do almost any damage um, mm -hmm. uh, because he hasn't been able to itemize AP very well. Morgana isn't ever going to scale terribly well with AP. And at this point, you can actually, as Havoc Hamsters, contest the more important objective, mm -hmm. the, the uh, Infernal Soul coming oh, up. Yes. Shivana's got Teleport, so this is such a fine split push from her. It's it's totally good. Mm -hmm. Um uh, she's going to be able to pressure it, and all Havoc Hamster's core four have to do here is is look to not engage. Not right. get engaged on by the wolf. Not get engaged on by the queen. Let oh, but this is five men over. They're doing exactly what you told them not to. That's going to be uh, oh. ultimate coming out. Gargoyle Stone Plate is going to be used as well, but that's going to be Kaisa picking with the first kill. Zyra ultimate come out. Camille not able to find the damage. That's going to be knock and up. Shibana's and Shivana's actually line. here. That was so much damage. Great Wombo combo coming out. Double kill picked up for the Orn, and that's going to be the execution coming out from the Kaisa with that Akathian Rain. Perfect execution. Uh, they need one player to go mid right now and push up the mid wave so that they can uh, just go ahead and end off of Infernal, unless, of course, they want to go ahead and Infernal into Baron. I think mm -hmm. Baron is probably a bit more of a formality at this point, but sure. it looks like they're going to be going uh, objective to objective, making sure that they play this game out as safely as possible. They don't overextend themselves, um, and they just get a, a, an open and shut case. I can't imagine this game swinging back in the favor of BSB. Uh, Camille trying her hardest, but not being able to deal with the overwhelming pressure of the team fight ultimates coming up from Orn, who's so far ahead and so go. Vigar so far behind that Vigar can't even threaten the likes of Zyra with with his ultimate. He really has no kill pressure. Um, the Morgana is one and twelve. So, Ooh. and that like was the Zillion, Zillion from was last game. Apparently, the problem. Mm. Um, not the cleanest gameplay coming out here. All Havoc Hamsters has to do now is crit. Yeah, it's and fantastic. Uh, now, now you just switch lane assignments. You've got two teleports up, so you go ahead and you switch it to. Oh, the Shivana actually might have cut out the Caitlyn here. Is going to be able to get a lot of damage. It's going to be Ignite coming through as well. But Caitlyn, uh, the master of kiting with her ranged abilities, will be able to get her away. Huh. Um, and interestingly enough, we were just talking about how the Morgana was, you know, 1 in 12, the same Zillion from last game. Habit Campsters banned out the Zillion. So it's like, yeah. you know, it, you see, when you see these games from a 5v5 perspective, you have the ability to be able to see the weak and the strong sides of the game. But that's going to be Nunu taking a lot of damage. Going to have to use some abilities to be able to get away from that. Oh. Warwick trying to go in, but he doesn't have his team with him. This Camille is, is here, but the Ignite is burning, and what a massive shield onto the Kaisa using the... Oh, oh no! Oh, no! The triple kill coming out! That's going to oh. be the quadra kill picked up. Are we going to be able to see anything else coming through? That's going to be the Morgana landing the binding. Kaisa wants it badly. The flash forward coming through. Hey, it's going to be able to use... Hey, the, oh, no! The... the it's no! Be, no! 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 Morgana, why would you troll us so bad? Why no! would you have to use Zanya's? No! No! no. <laughs> I'm so sad. Oh. I'm so sad. The, the only way this could get worse is if, if, is if BSB surrender before they're able to actually take the 50 gold from the Nexus and carry it into the next game because yeah. that's so be. So BM, but such clean execution coming up. Such clean Hamsters execution, there. and that's going to be a one game coming back here. So able to tie up this series in the best of two. Now that means that they had the mental fortitude. So Havoc Hamsters able to come back, gather themselves, and pick up a win here in this game. Yeah, fantastic way to go ahead and regain composure. And it looks like in higher ELO games, 
whoever's got scaling apparently not only wins in the late game but also wins early it, it doesn't make any sense both of these teams picked weaker early game team compositions and chose to scale for their wins and were able to go ahead and, and, and pull it off um, with fantastic execution and uh, great mitigation play from Shivana, who had much more presence this game and didn't give up as much against the top laner of BSB this time around. So the top laner of BSB kind of left out on an island to dry as the uh, the Vigar and the Morgana were were tanned in the sun. So yeah, absolutely, and it's such a great uh, it's such a great look to be able to see how. Uh, Havoc Hamsters were able to come back into the game and actually show that they had some sort of fortitude. This was a requested game to be cast. So Meow Meow Meow, the top laner who played the Shivana this game, requested from me in the Twitch chat to cast this game. So if you would like your games casted by me with the help of my co-caster Corey here, then please feel free to reach out to me either on Discord or through Twitch chat. You know, if I'm streaming someone else's game, uh, if you want to, if you want me to cast your Clash games or whichever, I'd be happy to do that as well. But it looks like we will have an interview with with the mid laner uh, Orn uh, in the form of a Nintendo, so we're gonna be getting that set up for y'all in just a moment. But bam, if I if I figure out how to one of these days, I will learn how to work Discord. I promise you. <laughs> I I just like you can't for some reason call somebody or invite them without first adding them as a friend. You know, and I like everybody that I cast, and I love everybody that's uh, excited. But uh, uh, sometimes I add Eventually friends, and I'm your like, "Friends list gets gets a little clogged, right?" And you say, "Right." It feels like my Facebook friends list. If I was a boomer, <laughs> and I would make that reference, but I won't. But you won't, because you're because you're because you're that because you're that guy. I, I understand yeah. completely. Uh, okay, Nintendo dude, gonna be able to add him into the group chat, huh? So now I can join the call, and now here we go with this thing. Hello. Uh, hello, hello, hello. Nintendo. So everyone, we are joined here by Nintendo, who was the mid laner for Havoc Hamsters, able to come back in game two and pull out a very decisive win against Blood, Sweat, and Beers, who got the better of them in game one. Nintendo, tell us a little bit about the preparation and the mental fortitude uh, going into game two. Uh, going into game two, uh, Banzillion. Uh, <laughs> we were thinking about first picking it. Um, we do have uh, a pocket zillion, but we wanted to run a, a team comp with Orn in it. We wanted to outscale them. We felt like we had better team play. They had a lot of uh, good splitting, so we felt like if we had the, the team play, the big uh, ultimates, the peel for the, the Kai'Sa, then we could potentially win it. I gotcha. Absolutely. Uh, and what was even cooler to see is... Uh, from our perspective, we can determine, or at least we can kind of tell where the weak points of the map are. And for the side of Blood, Sweat, and Beers, it looks like uh, that top laner who did hold a rank of Diamond 4 was able to constantly bullying out uh, your top laner. So uh, explain to me a little bit about you know what the strategy was going into that and trying to keep uh, Meow 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 uh, in, the, uh, in the game, mentally speaking. So we did a lot of preparation for this. We, we were playing solo queue. We were like, all right, uh, Chris, uh, Meow Meow Meow's name's Chris. And we were like, okay. we were like, just, we want you this game to go zero, zero, zero. We don't mm -hmm. want you to farm. We, we want you to farm. We don't want you to get any kills. We just need you to play as safe as possible because you're playing weak side. Our jungler recognized that. We recognized that as a team. And we were like, all right, if you could mitigate as much as possible and we could get an advantage uh, more than he's getting over you, and you come in for those team fights, that's where we're, we're going to be the strongest. So great to see that, especially coming out of this uh, ESDL. So the ESDL is the Esports Development League. That is what they stand for. And it's so great to be able to see uh, players like yourself and your teammates really try and focus on strategy and really try and prove together as a team. You know, this is a six weeks long season followed by a three week playoff with a championship at the end. You might not have these same teammates, but still the drive and the motivation to be able to get better with your teammates that you currently have. Excellent to see there. Uh, Corey, uh, Lay, lay it on me. What you got, man? 
Yeah, I wanted to ask you actually about the first game. Um, you went ahead and R1, R2'd Morgana Lucian, kind of trying to bait them into thinking that the Morgana was actually mm -hmm. going to be going bottom side, and you were able to, to successfully flex it mid and really shut down the Galio quite a bit. Um, but you didn't have much agency as the game went on. Can you give me a bit more insight into the Orn pick? Because you B1 Orn. Did you know from the start that you were going to be playing that? Yes, that that is my pick, 100%. Um, okay. Uh, uh, I generally like don't play... On it or? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Much more than the Morgana. The Morgana is... I, I tend to pick Morgana um, into... It's kind of safe. Uh, I like it into Galio. I like it into more uh, like really aggressive uh, mid laners like assassins, uh, like Syndra. Um, so it's something I've been practicing. I guess it was just like a, a comfort thing in my mind. We did have the the R five flex pick to put it uh, support, but I, like I said, I liked it in the Galio. But like you said, there really wasn't m much agency. It, it's the word to use to do anything. I couldn't. Um, I could catch the Galleon rotations. I, I did that uh, once, I believe, but I couldn't affect the map as much as I really wanted to, like I could on Orn or like I could on someone who uh, has a little bit more carry potential, like a Corky or like a Victor or Azir. Yeah, and I, I also noticed that you, you, uh, the, the pick ban actually went very similarly both games, and you ended up only changing one ban up for the, the Zillion to kind of take away maybe a comfort pick for the support, but can you give me a bit more insight into the Darius and the GP bands? Because that was consistent throughout both games. What what was the reasoning? We do like to have the late game in, in the first game. I do believe we got outdrafted, um, but the GP is very good. It's just generally good into um, almost all matchups. I, I think is one of the champions that could actually go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Ornn, um, but uh, the Darius is purely um, target ban, uh, the straight mm. up. Darius was a target ban. Interesting. So trying to take away the stronger picks from the side of, of BSB and make sure that you can guarantee that your top laner has an opportunity to not just get completely shoved out of lane, like you said, just go ahead and farm, focus on yourself split push and and we'll be okay if you go zero 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 yep the game will end well for us so yeah i think uh congratulations on being able to claw back a a game to win uh your execution with the composition was fantastic your draft phase was also really really clean um and uh yeah congrats on the win man thanks uh big shout out to my team Just big shout out to my jungler he actually camped mid this game it was uh you know yeah, it did get things. So <laughs> Flash was down. Flash was down. That's, that's what, that was the call. That was the call. <laughs> Let's just go in. So, <laughs> go, go, go. Now that you guys have, have picked up a tie here, what is your overall record, and what are your hopes of getting into the playoff seasons here? Ooh, good question. I believe we are two and four. Yes, we are two and four. Okay. Um, we believe that Sector X, uh, the team we dropped two games to, is very, very strong. Uh, mm -hmm. I can see them coming out on top, and I do think that um, fighting for that last spot is going to be us and Blood, Sweat, and Beers. Uh, okay. So it's, it might be something we got to look into to get to get a recast because it's we do have them coming up in a couple weeks to yeah. the rematch. Well, yeah, and that's going to be uh, very exciting, too. So incredibly crucial, then, you were able to get the tie here against Blood, Sweat, and Beers if that is going to be the team, indeed, that you're fighting for for that last playoff spot. Uh, so, it, you know, it, what's going to be interesting, too, on my Twitch, uh, which I've already uh, linked and you guys are on right now, the VOD mm -hmm. is going to be there, so you guys can go back, uh, go through that. I'm also going to be posting it to YouTube within 24 hours, uh, just because I have to wait there. But, you know, being able to go back on your games and see, you know, where there are rooms for improvements is going to be crucial. So I look forward to keeping up with the storyline. Uh, when you have another game, please let me know. And if it's available, uh, I will try and cast it because I do want to get these uh, storylines going on because I want uh, your fans, if there's only one or if there's a hundred of them, I want them to know, you know, like kind of what you guys' chances are of getting into this uh getting in the playoffs and everything. So again, congratulations, man. And I uh, uh, really appreciate you coming in on the interview. Thanks guys. Thanks for casting. You guys both did amazing. Oh, we appreciate that. Have a great GGs, one, man. All right. GGs. GGs. 
All right, everyone, that's going to do it here from us. Again, this was the ESDL Week 3 matchup uh, between Havoc Hamsters and Blood, Sweat, and Beers, ending up in a tie in this Best of Sioux series, but it was still an exciting and incredible game to cast. I'm your host, Fayoline, and Corey, thank you so much uh, for coming back and uh, casting with me today. I really appreciate it, man. Anytime, homie. It was, it was a lot of fun. All right, brother. All right, well, that's going to do it from me and everyone else here, so thanks again, and good luck in your next games, y'all.